If you're a YouTuber and you live stream on a regular basis, you might have used Google Hangouts on Air. If you bring in guests regularly, that might be your go-to tool. But no more, August 1st, it's gone. So what are you gonna do? Well, I've got you covered. Stick around. Doug Hewson YT, tech for content creation. G'day, it's Doug from Doug Hewson YouTube here. And this is a channel where we talk about tech for content creation. And today it's all about Google Hangouts on Air. Now, if you're a YouTuber and live stream, you might know that Google Hangouts on Air is going away August 1st, and a couple of weeks from when I'm filming this. A lot of people use Google Hangouts on Air to bring multiple people into their live stream. A good example is my friend Viper, who on his Viper Live channel brings in the who's who of tech to talk on Friday Night Viper. So what's Vibe gonna do? He's gonna have to look for an alternative and we're gonna cover a few of those today. These are the ones that i found that I wanna share with you so you can make your own decision of what you're gonna do. So what are we gonna look at today? Well, in today's video, we're looking at these criteria for a, a viable replacement for Google Hangouts on Air. The first one is because it's a YouTube related thing, it has to stream to YouTube. That's a given. The second thing, you have to be able to bring in multiple guests so that you can have a similar look and feel to Google Hangouts, maybe with some variations, but the basic premise is to have multiple people on your stream so you can converse and have a conversation. Let's check out the options. The first option I've got for you is for those people who like to get into their technical things a little bit because it involves using two tools, Zoom, and a desktop encoder like OBS, Streamlabs OBS, vMix, so forth. What's the positives? The positives are you can bring people in with Zoom. Zoom is bringing people in on a party. I have a great example, it's called Creator Chaos. When they do their Creator Chaos streams, they bring people in by Zoom, they bring it in, they pop it through OBS or Streamlabs OBS with some overlays to make it look fancy and pop it right out to YouTube. The upside is you get all your guests you can, and you can stream to YouTube. So it ticks both boxes of our criteria. The downside is you need a fairly decent grunty computer to organize your, your Zoom, to run your OBS, to encode your video and send it back out to YouTube. So we're looking at uh, already having that technology. If you've already got that in place, then you might be able to put that together if you have some technical knowledge, if you know how to play with OBS. In my mind, people who use Google Hangouts on Air probably don't want to get into that level of customization and having to set all that up to get it working. There's a lot of things that can go wrong and break along the way. But the Zoom itself is a conferencing software, so you can bring multiple people into a call, as they say, and it's probably the top of the class in regards to multi-person conferencing software. So Zoom is a big tick for that, but it doesn't allow you to stream directly to YouTube at, at present using the regular product. So that's why you need to use it in conjunction with OBS. My second option today is all to do with something that's a little similar to the Zoom and, and desktop encoder one, but it is Skype with a desktop encoder. So instead of using Zoom to do your conferencing, you're using Skype. Now, most would say that Zoom is way better than Skype, and I would tend to agree, but you can still do it. Uh, Skype, you can bring in to your OBS or Streamlabs OBS using the new NDI feature. You can go into Skype and check the box to turn NDI on. So you can effectively uh, take each person as a separate feed and place them on your scene in OBS and make it look how you want it, put your overlays in. So, so there's some, there's a quite a, a broad area of customization again, because you're using OBS. The downside is the Skype calls are not as good as Zoom calls. So the quality is probably gonna be a little bit less. And all these things also factor in again to how good a computer you have to do all this processing, to process the Skype calls and to process the encoding for OBS and send it out to YouTube. So in my mind, it's probably on par with the Zoom, probably if you uh, factor in the fact that the, you might have a few more uh, quality issues with Skype, that uh, Zoom is probably just at, out overhead of, of the uh, Skype option at the moment. Where Skype might be a good factor is if you're doing a one-on-one -on -one style interview where you can just bring one person in. And the other upside with using Skype, because you're bringing people in using NDI, you can effectively have Skype on another computer that is doing the Skype call. 
seeing it over your network by via NDI into OBS. So it takes some of that headroom of processing off your main streaming computer. So that's an option as well. So there's a little bit more flexibility in how you do that. It gets a bit technical. So that's the big con on both these first two options is the technicality of setting all this up and keeping it working and troubleshooting any issues you might have before or during your stream. This next one is a Mac only solution and it's a variant on number two with Skype, but it is using Ecamm Live as your encoder. Now Ecamm Live has native Skype support, so you can bring in that NDI signal or just a normal regular Skype signal if you have Skype on the same machine, but you can do that same setup I was talking about with Skype where you can have it on another machine and uh, pipe your video footage across via NDI into Ecamm. Now Ecamm, the upside of Ecamm is it is fairly intuitive. It's probably a less, lot less setting up to do than uh, say with OBS. Your scenes can be set up and it works seamlessly with NDI. Other avenues of getting your camera footage from your local scene in, whether that's by your webcam, a DSLR, or even via a cell phone camera, like an iPhone or an Android. And while it might cost you a few dollars, their, their software is pretty robust and is a great live streaming software if you're running a Mac. And that's a big con on this one though. It's only available on Mac. So if you're on Windows or Linux, you're out of luck. But I wanted to mention it in this one because Ecamm Live is a good solution and I actually use Ecamm Live for some of my general live streams. So consider it, keep it in your list and we'll see how we go. All right, now we're getting into the encoding away from your computer side of things, just like Google Hangouts does presently, where all the guests and everything are getting handled by Google servers. Now, the first one I got for you today is called Lightstream. Lightstream is formerly known as InfiniScene. So have you ever heard of InfiniScene, which I hadn't either. I hadn't heard of either of those, InfiniScene or Lightstream. Uh, they've been around for a couple of years apparently, and this was suggested to me by Justin Brown from Primal Video as an option for a Google Hangouts on-air alternative. So let's have a look at it. The first thing you'll notice is the interface is pretty slick. You can have a look, it's all coming through the Chrome browser here. We've got a Chrome browser open. You can see that the integration and the layout is very sleek and nice. The things you can bring in, you can bring in cameras, you can bring in audio sources, you can put in text, you can put bring in images as overlays. And we have a quite a considerable list of integrations, things like Batissimo and a Streamlabs overlays, things like that, stream elements, you know, the, the whole shebang. All the ones you've probably heard of, Tippy Stream, you can integrate, uh, have an integration with this where you can simply just paste the URL for the widget or the overlay that you're using and it will place it on there and you can uh, customize it to your heart's content. So it's pretty cool. Nice interface, cloud-based encoding, as I mentioned at the beginning, and multiple guests. Now you can bring in seven guests plus the host at any one time. So I think, I think that works out to me as being eight people, including the guest. So seven guests and the host. And to top it all off, this platform is absolutely free. So that's a big bonus as well. You can stream to YouTube and various platforms, of course. One con that I came across, and it could be just my uh, testing, so your mileage may vary, is I found when we're doing transitions from, stream, from scene to scene, that they are very clunky and sort of assembled. Uh, are, are live. I have a bit of test footage here from YouTube, but this could be due to the fact that the computer I was using was only a dual core processor. So I don't know if that's an issue because it, to, in my mind, all the processing should be happening over on, on Lightstream side. So test it out and see if the transitions are acceptable for you or see if they work fine for you. But I, I did run into a few issues with the transitions. A somewhat con is it only runs in Chrome, but that's fairly common for some of these sorts of things as you need a certain browser for them to work properly. And the other thing is all guests must also be using Chrome to come in to the stream. They can't, there's no mobile uh, option at the moment and there's no uh, using say Safari or Firefox or one of the other browsers. But check it out, if you wanna check it out, there's a link in the description below, of course. And the last one I've got for you guys today is StreamYard. StreamYard is the new kid on the block. And again, 
it's another one where the encoding is happening in the cloud on the StreamYard servers. What can you do with StreamYard? Well, firstly, the guests, that's the most important thing. So let's get right to it, the guests. You can have 10 people uh, currently in the uh, green room ready to go live and you can have up to six people on screen at once, which isn't too bad, it's not too shabby. Uh, six people at once is pretty good. And they're looking at, at being able to increase that in the future if demand is there. So they're very open to suggestions and changes and improvements. It has a very simple and clean interface. You can bring in lower third overlays that you can pre-set uh, up. You can add your logos, you can add a short intro uh, video that you can roll at any time in your live stream. And you can also uh, add a motion background so that when you're in that multiple scene shot and you might have uh, gaps between each camera, you've got a nice uh, background. Maybe it's, it's a gradient or an overlay or just a slight motion GIF that you can upload and it looks really sweet if you set it up nicely. One of the big bonuses is comments integration. So if you've got comments coming from say YouTube, you can uh, pull them in and highlight those individually so you can address them. So that's, that's a nice feature. I've seen that on the, uh, you can do that on Ecamm Live, which we, we talked about a little bit earlier. So that's a great little feature. And the big thing is that if you're bringing in guests, they don't have to be on Chrome. They can be coming in off a mobile device and they can be using any sort of web camera, get the link, they open it up in Chrome or on their mobile device and they can join you wherever they are. So that's pretty cool. And it's really easy to invite people to join your stream. There's a simple link that you can send out you can copy paste it, send it to whoever your guests are going to be, or you can make it like a call-in show, have, have people just send it to everybody in your chat and have people call in, and you can just bring them on one at a time from the green room and bring them on live on StreamYard. It's pretty cool. The only real con on this is it's only Chrome-based in regards to running the show. So obviously people can come in, they can be on their mobile device, they can be on various systems, but if they're on a computer, they need to be on Chrome. But that's not a deal breaker because most people uh, either use Chrome or have Chrome as a backup browser on their computer anyway. Now there is a free version of StreamYard which you can use to test but it has some stream, StreamYard branding on it. And you can also sub, uh, get a subscription to use StreamYard. I believe it starts at around $25 a month and that gives you all fully customized uh, streams and go live as often as you like. And of course you can stream on those multiple platforms that we might have talked about earlier. It's integrated with Restream, so it's pretty cool. I think StreamYard is the upcoming, the go-to for uh, this style of streaming, multiple person streaming into the future. Well, there are all the solutions I've got for you today. Let me know, is there a solution that I missed? Put it in the comments so we can share it with not only me, share it with the community. And let me know also, if you're researching and looking for an alternative to Google Hangouts on Air, let me know which one you end up going with. That'd be pretty cool to know as well. I wanna know, because I know a lot of people are jumping on board StreamYard, but there might be a lot of people jumping on board Lightstream as well, uh, or one of the other solutions. Maybe you're, a, maybe you're a Zoom fan. Maybe you are, let me know. When well, you're looking for more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button because we do these sorts of things. We talk about YouTube and we talk about gear and we talk about anything that's to do with content creation. Or you can check out some of these videos here and here. Some of it's what YouTube has recommended, but there's a really cool uh, playlist here for you as well. Well, this is Doug from Doug Houston YouTube. And we'll catch you later. Subscribe to Doug Hewson YT for more tech for content creation.